Thank you, that was beautiful. Good evening. Um, I'm, I'm reversing the order a little bit because I get to. Uh, and welcome. Uh, Pastor is in Brooklyn, I think. Uh, I know it's Martha's birthday, so if you happen to see Martha, wish her a happy birthday. But Pastor was really excited about being able to, uh, to go with Carol to celebrate uh, the birthday as a family. Uh, they don't get that chance on Saturday nights very often, and I really like Saturday nights. You guys are the best. So uh, uh, welcome and, uh, and thanks for putting up with me. Uh, Christine Erickson will assist this night. Uh, Thomas Erickson will be the acolyte. We, we're so, so privileged to have an acolyte. We don't ever have them anymore, so that's kind of neat. Um, Josh Gutierrez is sitting here. Josh is our new youth worker. If you haven't met him, introduce yourself. Uh, bump elbows with him or something after the service. Yeah, fist bump. He's going to read the gospel for us this night, so at least he'll take his mask off and you get to look at and see what his face looks like. Um, the communion elements, Pastor finally texted me this afternoon and said, I consecrated them. So uh, the communion elements are pre-consecrated. And though I will, as you know, do the words of institution, I will not be consecrating elements that's already been done. So with that in mind, let us make then our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We please rise for our opening hymn. be seated. We continue with the Advent call to worship. This is how God showed his love among us. 
He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. The son of God most high was born in the humble surroundings of a lowly stable. In gratitude for the Lord of love, who did not despair the rough manger, nor does he, he now despise to make poverty of our hearts. His cradle, we light the candle of love. I have loved you with an everlasting love. For the one who in great love descends to us, casts out our sins and enters in, we give thanks. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 9, starting at the first verse. But then there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into the, to the contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephilim. But in the later time he was made glorious the way of the sea the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as, the as on the day of Midian. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We please rise. We will continue with the prayer of the dead. Stir up your power, O Lord. And come and help us by your might. That the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. 
for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who gave birth to her firstborn. Uh, uh, did I miss that? Who was the child. <laughs> was the child. There we go. Who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to the firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there, was, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord, uh, of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothing and lying in a manger. This is the gospel of the Lord. Pray. Please be seated. know that I will ever get juggling masks and microphones correct. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace be unto you in peace from God in heaven and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So when you were a kid and a story began once upon a time, you knew a fairy tale was on the way, right? And when you're watching TV and the words a long time ago in a land far, far away start scrolling down the screen, what do you know? It's another rerun of Star Wars. Well, not so with the Christmas gospel that we hear today. The account of Jesus' birth that begins, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. Or in the words of a version many of us learned when we were much younger, for it came to pass in those days. You see, fairy tales and fantasies occur in mythical lands and on worlds far away from us, far away planets, if you will. But today's gospel occurs in the real town of Bethlehem during the actual reign of Caesar Augustus, 
He was the first Roman emperor, also the son of Julius Caesar, if you were interested. And the time of Quirinius, the governor of, of uh, the Roman governor, rather, of Syria and of Judea. Now, it's important for us to recognize the actual history surrounding the birth of Jesus. Because around Christmas time, our culture often focuses on make believe and magic and fantasy. Those things certainly have a proper place, I would agree. But it seems that for many, the stuff of Christmas, if you will, the lights, the gifts, the music, they can become a flight into an imaginary world, a temporary retreat from real life. And really, that's the exact opposite of the Christmas story we hear this night. Luke emphasizes that what he wrote over 2,000 years ago is indeed real that it actually occurred in a real place and at a real time when certain real officials were in power. It isn't a legend or a myth or a fable. It is true, an accurate and factual account of the way things really were. Christmas is about the real Son of God entering into his creation as a true and literal baby boy, real flesh and blood, it's about a first-time mom giving birth to him in the humblest of circumstances, in the cold of night, among real livestock and hay and smell. It's about the Lord of all taking on the form of a servant and being laid in a cattle trough so that he might rescue us, rescue each and every one of us from our sins. There is nothing unreal or imaginary about Christmas. For Jesus came to walk with us, exactly in the real place where the prophets had said he would be. Indeed, the prophet Micah foretold that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. And so he was. It's a real place. You can still go there today and visit. But Christ didn't live there very long. In fact, uh, he was raised and lived most of his years in the area where his earthly parents came from, and that would be Galilee, far north of Bethlehem in Jerusalem, sort of like upstate New York, or maybe Canada. So, when Caesar Augustus called for a census, for taxes, no doubt, Joseph left Nazareth, of Nazareth, Nazareth, that's easy for me to say, right? Joseph left Nazareth in Galilee, and because he was of the house and line of David, he traveled to Bethlehem, making possible the fulfillment of the prophecy of Micah. Now, ultimately, as we know, the family did return to Galilee, where Jesus spent his childhood, grew to be a man, supported his family as a carpenter. And once it began, Galilee is where Jesus did most of his ministry. What a blessing for Galilee foretold by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before the birth of Christ. You heard it read tonight. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, Isaiah wrote. And on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. This child, this son, this light is Christ. Galilee, once so dark and depressed and forlorn, became blessed because Jesus really did live there. Many were really healed by him there. Thousands of him saw him there and learned from him there. And even more thousands were given hope and faith and love and light. Yet while Christ's earthly home was Galilee, his actual birth, as we know, was in Bethlehem where a magnificent light was kindled for us down in that dark and dirty stable, where Christ was born for us among the animals. The animals. Seems so fitting, doesn't it? Because even in the earliest creation of the world, we have a lot in common with animals, especially with the other mammals. All animals, even human animals, have brains and hearts, lungs, circulatory systems, and the like. 
We have a lot in common, but because we all have the same creator. But God did not make every animal absolutely unique. He reused and reapplied a lot of his best design elements. Yet while we have a lot in common, humans were also made with an absolutely crucial element that makes us unique from all the other animals. For into Adam, God breathed the breath of life, and the first human became a living creature. God breathed into Adam. You see, in Hebrew, the word for breath is exactly the same as the word for spirit. So humans were not created to be only physical animals. We were also made to be spiritual beings. We are spiritual and physical hybrids, if you will. Animals, certainly. Yet, with the ability to relate intimately to God, who is a spirit, and also to know and to reflect, uh, to know God and to reflect God spiritually. That's what we were created to be, those physical, spiritual hybrids relating to God. But then the first people sinned. And when they did, the spiritual part that reflects God and is close to God, well, that part died. And what was left? Animal nature. You know what that's like. We see it today. Survival of the fittest, self-preservation at all costs, following our basest instincts and desires. We have all fallen away from God, wanting to go our own way, do our own thing, and in doing so, we've become sort of inhuman, or we can be. So in order to save us from perishing eternally, Jesus, the Son of God, took on our human nature and caused himself to be placed in a feeding trough. The one who slept near the beasts came to lift us out of our inhumanity and set us free from the beastliness and the beastly power of sin and of death. Jesus descended to the depths of our fallenness in order to raise us up to the heights of eternal life. He became like us, so we might become like him. Seeing Jesus stabled with the animals, we can be reminded of Adam, commanded by God to name all of the animals in the Garden of Eden. But in that feeding trough, we see Jesus as the new Adam, come to restore us and all things to paradise, to recreate us by coming, his coming in the flesh. God greatly exalted us by becoming not an angel or any other creature, but a true man, our human brother that took our place under the law in order to bear its condemnation and free us from its damnation. The wood of the manger, that would become the wood of the cross. The swaddling cloths of Jesus' birth would be traded for grave clothes that he would leave behind after his glorious resurrection. In this fully divine man, there is eternal life. In this child, raised, I'm sorry, laid in a manger, raised from the dead, and seated at the right hand of the Father, there is salvation. Only he could accomplish it. Jesus alone is our only true hope for salvation. Fear not, said the angel, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Fear not. Do not be in terror any longer of death or of judgment from God, not for, for, for sure, because your sins are forgiven. Even the evils and injustices that have been done to you have been cleansed from you by this holy birth. Yours is the kingdom of God. Light has broken in and shattered the darkness forever. 
Rejoice greatly in the good news, for all of this is for you. That's what the angel said. Jesus is born to you. God and man come together in Jesus, and those who believe and are baptized into the body of Christ are thereby reunited with God. That spiritual nature breathed into man originally by God but put to death by sin is reborn in us through baptism and through faith in Christ. But where do we find this Jesus? The angel gave the shepherds a sign, a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. You and I, though, we're also given a sign. We are to find Jesus humbly mangered in the bread and the wine of the sacrament of the altar. You don't need to attend grandiose musical reenactments of the Christmas story to experience closeness to the Christ child. It isn't necessary to have a living nativity recreation with actors and live animals to feel just like you're there. The reality of the living nativity is here because Jesus himself is here in the bread and in the wine, tangibly and concretely. He is really here on the altar at Holy Communion. The bread and wine are his manger in which his body and blood are truly present to bring to you all the blessings of his holy birth as we are moved to kneel before him. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in Bethlehem now. For the word Bethlehem means house of bread. And he who is the living bread from heaven comes down to make this place a house of bread, to satisfy your spiritual hunger and to fill you with his life. Here is Holy Communion. Here is the nativity of our Lord. Here is the manger, the feeding trough, and quite frankly, it is you and I who are the animals kneeling before the king. But so be it. Let us humbly partake of the holy communion, the holy sacrament, so that our humanity may be eternally restored in the Christ who is truly human and truly divine. Let us with Mary Keep and ponder all these things in our hearts in penitent faith. And let us with the shepherds glorify and praise God for all the things we have heard and seen in Christ, just as it has been told to us. For truly, it came to pass in those days. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and unto life everlasting. Amen. Will you please rise? Having heard the proclamation of the gospel and the good news, let us together confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed as printed in your bulletin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is wor worshiped and glorified 
who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We will continue with the prayer of the church. For the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, let us bow our heads together in prayer. Almighty God, your Son, who once came in flesh, comes today in word and sacrament and will come again in glory. Keep us firm in the faith until we are received into your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of truth, we give you thanks for all who share your word. Bless them and their labors and continue to send workers into your vineyard that there may be a bountiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God in heaven, preserve and prosper our Sunday school and preschool, that our young people may be taught to delight and treasure the word of God above all riches. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless the food pantry and preschool at St. Luke Lutheran Church in Putnam Valley. Provide the financial and personal support needed to carry on the mission and ministry entrusted to them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, extend your healing hand to those for whom we pray, including Megan Lawson's dad, William Capruso, still in cardiac care. Janine Toller, now recovering at home in the care of her sister, Pam Orstein. Herb Peterson, back in the hospital with a blood clot in his leg. And all those we now name before you in voice or silently in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus. Here are thanks for those who have departed this life in faith and, had ne and who now await the joyous day of your return. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the offerings we so freely give in the offering plate in the narthex, uh, electronically, by mail, some even carry envelopes into the church office. I was uh, doing a caregiver call with a lady uh, last week, and uh, as I walked out, she went, oh, wait, 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 my offering. So whatever, however, the Lord is good and uh, we would like to pray now for all those gifts that we've first been given that we offer up to the Lord in our offerings. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. In this season of penitence and reflection, let us think of our unworthiness and confess before God that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. Let us own our dependence on his mercy and ask for his forgiveness. Please kneel as you are able.
God Almighty, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only son, our Emmanuel, to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise. Tonight we will observe the Eucharist at the rail, as is our custom on Saturday nights. Um, however, unlike last Saturday, please come with your masks. Um, and um, we would like to limit it to four people. I know we, we've, our numbers have grown at the rail sometimes. Um, so if it's a choice between five of you or three of you, make it three. Um, and let us uh, try to space as well as we can and stay as healthy as we can to serve our Lord as long as we can, okay? We continue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. We praise you that in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, your salvation foreshadowed in the Hebrew Scriptures, and your promises given by the prophets were fulfilled. The day of our deliverance has dawned, and we rejoice in hope as we look for the triumph of Christ's kingdom when he comes again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy Remember us in your, in your kingdom as we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When last we met as the family of God, we heard these words. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me.
know you will. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Please kneel as you are able. Take and eat the true body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat this is the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ broken for you. Well then, I'm ready for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the true body of Christ broken for you. Honey, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ broken for you. Josh, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Thomas, may God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and every day for the rest of your life until life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Please kneel as you are able. Then take and eat the true body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ broken for you. Then take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Please kneel as you are able. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the true body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat, this is the true body of Christ given for you. to the table of the Lord. Please kneel as you are able. Do you receive? How about you? I figured you did. Let me do this. Receive a blessing. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and forevermore. May you walk with Jesus. May your love for him just overflow your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Take and eat the true body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat, this is the true body of Christ given for you. 
Welcome to the table of the Lord. Please kneel as you are able. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ broken for you. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Please kneel as you are able. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. Yes? Gluten free? You're not. No, that's all right. Take and eat the true body of Christ broken for you. Please rise. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in true faith now and unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, you come to us. Make us always ready and send us forth to be your people in the world. Amen. Hmm. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We have, please be seated for a moment. Christine will try to make this quick and painless. First of all, I want to say thank you to Deacon Jim for leading us in a beautiful sermon tonight. Um, I also want to make notice to everybody, which I cannot believe it myself, but Christmas is coming. <laughs> and if it's not wrapped, it's just not going to be wrapped. <laughs> Forgive me, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, really? Um, but I do want to remind everybody about the worship uh, services we have coming on Christmas Eve. We have 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and 10 p.m. 4, 8, and 10 are in the sanctuary. 2 o'clock is the family service in Parish Hall. Okay? Um, also, I want to uh, welcome to Josh, who is here tonight. Josh Gutier is our new youth leader. Um, and he needs a place to live. <laughs> so can you help us find him an apartment that would be wonderful um, please see the bulletin for information or call Josh directly if you can help he's at home right now so um, before his parents get, no never mind <laughs> um, also about Christmas Eve is instrumentalists are still needed for the Christmas Eve Festival Band to play on the steps of the church before the 10 p.m. Christmas Eve worship service. See the bulletin for information or contact Paul Monte. Uh, the angel tree. The angel tree deadline to return gifts is for the residents of Olson Rest Home is this weekend. And the other thing that is for this weekend 
you want to give a poinsettia, this is it. <laughs> please, please, please turn it in this weekend. And finally, um, we also still have our Grief Share Bereavement Support Group and Getting Started classes. They will begin in January. We will provide further details as we get closer to that time. And that is all I Great. have. Jim, do Thank you, you have anything else nope. you wanted to add? The, uh, the, the information about Grief Share and Getting Started is in the bulletin. Read it at your convenience. We make these announcements because we assume you don't read. I know that's wrong, but we've gotten used to it. So why stop a good thing? Will you please rise for our final hymn?